Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. We can start getting excited about the World Cup. Warren Gatland has named a preliminary 54-man squad. So I thought, what better opportunity to focus on Wales and start looking ahead to the World Cup. And I know we still haven't even finished the season yet, but there's a few interesting selection things to discuss in terms of the Wales squad. So I thought, let's get into that. Make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know two things. Let me know what you think of the preliminary squad. And also let me know on the area that you think Wales most need to improve heading into the World Cup in France later on this year. Drop a comment about those things down below. If you can like the video and subscribe as well, then for me, that's always an added bonus. But tell you what, let's get into it. So I do appreciate that the World Cup doesn't start until the 8th of September. It is a long way to go until we get to that point. As I say, we've still got the domestic seasons going on, but it's not going to be too long, three or four weeks time when the domestic seasons are done. And then our eyes and our attention does start to turn towards the international game for a really long period of time. And Warren Gatland has kind of got us started with this, a 54 player preliminary squad. I won't read out every name, that'd be an incredibly boring video for all of you and you'd all switch off, but I'll flash up the players that have been selected on the screen and kind of give you, I suppose, just some of the headlines. So this is a 54 player squad, which they are going to reduce down to around 45 by the time they have their training camp in Switzerland in July. And then for the following training camp that they're going to have in Turkey, I believe it will be reduced again. So they'll slowly whittle it down and then have a pretty clear indication of the players they want to play in those warm up fixtures before they head out and before they kick off the World Cup in France. Uh, 10 uncapped players in the 54. Headline of those is Henry Thomas, the man who's played for England way back in 2014, who plays his rugby now for Montpellier. I'll get more onto him in a moment, but he is included. Joe Hawkins and Wynne Jones, I think, are probably the two big absentees. As I say, 10 uncapped players. No Thomas Young. Corey Hill is back, plays his rugby in Japan, but is now eligible after Welsh rugby changed their selection criteria. You will all remember in the Six Nations, the threat of strike action before the England game and that game in Cardiff, one of the concessions that was agreed between the union and the players was rather than having to have 60 caps to play for Wales, it reduced down to 25. So a player like Corey Hill is back in and able to be selected, even though he plays over in Japan. And that's probably quite a good point to start this video, I think, is the confusion in Welsh selection at the moment. And I'll give you a few different examples. Henry Thomas, who has played for England before, currently plays his club rugby in France, is able to be selected for Wales because he's never been capped, so therefore they can call him in. He qualifies through his family to be able to play for them. And in case anyone is wondering you know, why he is able to play, because World Rugby changed their, their uh, protocols a few years ago, because there's been a th more a three-year stand-down period. He last played for England in 2014, so he's allowed to switch allegiance, essentially. So Henry Thomas can play. Then you've got someone like Joe Hawkins, who currently plays in Wales, is moving to play for Exeter Chiefs in England at the end of this season. He's ineligible, I believe, because he would have made that switch or he would have been registered with Exeter Chiefs by the time the World Cup comes around. So he's not able to play. But then you've also got a player like Will Rowlands, who plays in Wales at the moment, is moving to play for Racing 92 next season. He's eligible to play because he won't be registered in France by the time the World Cup comes round. That's my understanding of it. And it's just this kind of, it's just such muddled thinking. It, it, it makes it pretty hard to follow, really. And in terms of that selection criteria, it makes a little bit of a mockery, really, if we're being honest. It, it makes sense in terms of the rules are there, but it just means it's really jumbled of who can play and who can't. And Warren Gatton has spoken about Joe Hawkins and he's pretty disappointed to, to be missing out on him. But it is what it is. I might circle back to Joe Hawkins in just a moment because I want to speak about Henry Thomas, the England prop, former England prop. As I say, 2014 was the last of his seven caps. Uh, played for Sale, he played for Bath, he's since gone over to Montpellier and done well there. I really like Henry Thomas as a player. He had a really tough time with injury through the middle part of his career, through a lot of his 20s. He was in and out of teams, he was injured a lot and struggled to really hold down a place. And I think that affected him really. That certainly affected the possibility of him getting international honours, probably also in a period of time when England, in terms of props, if you want to talk about Ellis Genge and Carl Sinclair coming through when they had Marler and Dan Cole and Mako Vinopola, the props were pretty good position for England for a little while. And he just struggled to 
to get into that team. It was similar also actually to another Bath teammate of his, Nathan Catt, who was another guy who just always struggled with injuries, was never quite able to, to break into that England team. But he's gone to Montpellier, playing really well. He's still only in his early 30s and he's able to be called up by Wales. And it's really interesting that a number of those uncapped players that Warren Gatland has selected are in the front row because I think the front five is the key area for Wales to improve on because what's their best front row? They haven't seemed to really be able to get the balance between scrummagers and players that have that all-round kind of game. So I think that's certainly something that he's focusing on at this moment in time. Um, and I think that front five is a focus of Gatlin. I think that's something that he has actually himself spoken about Um and maybe Henry Thomas is a player that comes in really experienced, who gives you something different there. But I think for this training camp, and you've got to remember, most of the times these international teams, when it comes to Six Nations, when it comes to a lot of the time they have together, it's really short. They're trying to patch a team together in a really short space of time. The World Cup is pretty much the only time really where they get a couple of months run up at it. So I think there is time for Wales to improve quite drastically, as there is for a number of the other sides actually out there. England being another one who will look to target those couple of months as that's a chance where they can take some quite big strides forwards. But for me, in that time, that front five is something Warren Gatlin needs to needs to tie down. And I suppose having the likes of Corey Hill come back in, still being able to pick Will Rowlands, they might have some better options there in the second row as well. Remember, Rowlands missed a lot of the Six Nations through injury. So that is a real positive for Wales, but it's certainly an area of concern. I will mention the, the no Thomas Young as well. I've seen a number of Welsh fans point this one out. Maybe he'll come in at a later date. You never know. Um, I think there is going to be a nature of this preliminary training squad because when they first meet up, some of them won't necessarily or might not have finished their domestic seasons. So there will be players coming and going. But no, Thomas Young is one I think the fans aren't particularly happy with. Um, so let me know if you agree with that in the comments down below. And I guess the final thing just to mention here is Joe Hawkins, the guy that's come in, young guy, has been impressive. Warren Gatland has said that he would be a player they kind of want to have in that team. You felt like he was going to be a guy for the future, could play in different areas across the back line. And he's basically made the decision that in this moment in his career, he'll think he'll develop better playing for Exeter, going overseas, playing in the Gallagher Premiership, and therefore he's not available to Wales. As I mentioned already, that whole thing of Will Rowlands being available, Joe Hawkins not being available for the World Cup is all kind of muddies the waters a little bit. But look, I think he is a loss. I think it is a real shame. He was one of the few bright sparks for Wales over what has been a pretty tough 12 to 18 months. And it's a real shame that they're missing out on him. But it means they've got a void to fill, don't they? In that centre in particular, where he played a lot in the Six Nations, who's going to come in and step in there. I'll leave it there for now. As I say, it's such a big squad. There's so many areas you could go in, but those were probably the two things that stood out to me was number one, Henry Thomas, and number two, the kind of selection policy and just how it all is a little bit muddled thinking, I guess. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, Wales fans. Do you agree with me that the front five is the key area that Wales need to make some big improvements if they are to have a decent World Cup. I don't even know what a decent World Cup looks at, looks like at the moment for, for the Welsh. That's probably a video for down the line once we get closer to the tournament. So drop a comment down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.